Hi, it's Bart and Caleb here, part of the GMAR Technology Committee. Today we're out at ProCam and we have with us Craig Irvin, who is the pro at ProCam. Kind of puts the pro in ProCam. Absolutely. Yes. So we've been adding a, a video series uh, for everybody at GMAR and talking a little bit about YouTube and Facebook and all that and how to post your videos and enhance your marketing there. We thought we'd come to the professionals to tell us a little bit about some of the equipment we can use and answer some of those really technical questions. Is my phone good enough or do I have to buy into the high-end equipment um, to really make professional videos? So, Greg, what can you tell us? Okay, um, first we live in a very, very visual society nowadays. I could write text till the cows come home, nobody's gonna read it, show me a picture, I wanna see what it looks like. Um, now with that said, when it comes to video, video's never been easy and also never been more complex than it ever has. Um, quality video, can come from something as simple as your phone uh, to something more complex like a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera and that's kind of what I want to talk about. Um, one of the keys to video more than anything else is a nice steady video with decent audio quality. We're going to talk about audio in a minute too because audio is part of AV. In fact, it's the first part of AV, audio video. Um, but let's talk about our phones for a second. Everybody's got one of these in their pocket, whether it's an iPhone, an Android phone, I don't care. They all do decent video. But if I go through, first things first, if I go through doing a video holding my phone vertical, that makes for incredibly bad video. Mm -hmm. Think of the flat yeah, screen TV right. in your living room. It's this way, not that way. Yeah. Um, the second, somebody told me that your eyes are horizontal on your head. Oh, so absolutely. Like, yeah. You know, your eyes aren't stacked. Like absolutely. That. It drives me insane. Every time I see someone who shot their, vid their, their video vertical, it's just insanity. So anyways, that alone is a huge start. We'll turn our cameras, our phones that way. Now, the other thing, if I walk through a house trying to show off, you know, the features or whatever, and I'm walking through and I'm shaking, that makes for incredibly bad video. Yeah. That's why we have devices like this. This is called a gimbal stabilizer. Yes, these are available for your phone. Yes, this thing is 99 bucks, not very expensive not at bad. all. Um, let me put my phone on here. I'm gonna snap my phone in. Now, you're the pro. Maybe uh, you should have one of us do it. I don't deal with these every day, so. Well, let me turn it on. How easy is it to do? Just that easy. Nice. But see how the phone now stays relatively stable? He could walk through a house. He could show me the living room. He could show me the kitchen. Um, laundry rooms, bathrooms, whatever, and I'm not shaking. I now have steady, steady video. Um, now, one of the other key things is awesome. we want wide angle lenses. In the real estate world, we want to show the expanse of the room. We want to show how much, how big the place is. Um, standard lenses aren't going to do that for me. Yes, there are wide angle lenses available for my phone, and I wanted to show you this too. So I'm going to pop this little guy out of his package, grab the clip. I'm going to screw the lens on like so, not drop it. Uh, now I have a little wide angle lens for my phone. So I now have wide angle video, I can make all the rooms look a little bit bigger on my phone. It was just that easy. Also very inexpensive, 20 bucks, 20 bucks you added a wide angle lens to your phone. Um, now that's entry levels, that's like, you know, I just want to get up and running, I have a phone, I can get something done. Um, say we want to up our game a little bit. Um, everybody thinks this is a video camera. And that was a video camera a few years ago. Still is, you've got a camcorder, you can use it. Um, not very wide angle, um, but DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are where it's at. Not only can these be your video cameras, they can also be your still cameras. And the whole still photography thing, that's gonna be a separate conversation. But let's talk about what the difference is. Let's talk about a DSLR for starters. DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex Camera. <clears throat> An SLR, Single Lens Reflex. Let's think of our old 35 millimeter cameras we had back in the 70s, and the 60s, and the 50s. <laughs> SLR technology is basically an early 50s technology. That means the light's passing through my lens, bouncing off a meter, a, excuse me, a mirror, coming through a prism, then out my eyepiece. So I'm looking directly through the lens that's going to be creating my photographs or my video. That's all fine and good. As soon as I go to video, I'm going to be looking on the rear screen of the camera. Um, that's also all fine and good. Greatest invention that ever happened to real estate. <laughs> <laughs> because we didn't have to print pictures anymore. Oh, how hard was that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Making film and all that. So digital cameras was excellent. 
But the point I'm trying to make is it's kind of an older technology, though still very, very viable. So DSLRs, fantastic cameras, like this is a Canon 77D. Not a high-end camera, not an entry-level camera. It's in that $1,000 price range on a camera body. But one of the keys that's gonna make it is this camera's gonna come with something that's like an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Um, now let's talk about lenses for a second. The smaller my number, in this case 18 to 55, the more wide angle I have on my lens. 18's wide, probably not wide enough for real estate use, so you're gonna probably want another lens. This is a Canon um, 10 to 18, so this lens is going from 10 to 18, this one's starting at 18 going to 55, so I'm gonna change the lens on it. Changing the lens is just this easy. Press the button, bayonets off. lose the cap. Let's also talk about lens hoods. Most lenses come with a lens hood. Think of your lens hood as the brim of your baseball cap. It's going to keep extraneous light from hitting my lens. So both indoors and out, we want to use our lens hoods at all time. It'll help increase contrast, a little better color rendition. And especially if I'm outside doing like exteriors of a property, sunny day, we yep. definitely want our lens cap on. That's going to keep our contrast good. Um, now with all of that, most of our cameras are going to have a dial on it. Green mode is, I'm an idiot, don't know anything about photography mode. Um, <laughs> it's not a bad place to start. It really is, because it's going to be automatic everything. So what I'm going to do is spin my little dial around, set my camera to movie mode, and I'm good to go. Um, now I can take a camera like this, put it on a gimbal. We were just playing with this other gimbal. But here, here's a bigger gimbal for our DSLRs. Now, how much does a gimbal like this run? Uh, it depends on how big a one you get and how heavy a camera you're going to put on okay. it. Starting at around $400, going up to like the $800 range, okay. um, which may sound like a lot of money. But just two years ago, something that does what this does was in that $1,500 range. Wow. But look what happens as I move my camera. See how my camera stays perfectly level. Yeah. Nice. And then even if I wanted to say point up or down. Oh, I so got you have a, a control here. Yeah, I have a little joystick on the back. So say I'm tilting my camera up to look at maybe a feature on the ceiling, and then coming back, panning around the room to see what's going on. But see how steady my camera is staying? It's perfect. Um, that's the key to the whole thing, is we want really, really, really steady video. Um, no one wants to watch shaky video. And also, people want good audio with their video. So whatever you're kind of recording on the camera audio-wise, when you're actually maybe doing a walkthrough of a property, probably not the audio you're going to use. You're going to probably add your audio after the fact. Now let's talk about mirrorless cameras. Um, Sony and a lot of other manufacturers, Panasonic, Fuji, etc., cetera, um, took a hard look at the DSLR camera, and it turns out we didn't really need the mirror and the prism and all that stuff to give me a viewfinder. Um, we could add what's called an EVH or an electronic viewfinder, which is basically a little monitor up here. So now, let's get this bad boy on. Okay, he's woken up. Whatever I see here, as soon as I put my eye to the viewfinder, is what I'm going to see there. Um, believe it or not, this camera and this camera, even though this one's smaller, doing the exact same job. I have all the same kind of controls, I can be manual, I can be fully automatic, so I'm going to set this guy over in fully automatic. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, video quality coming out of these. This is actually a Sony A6500. A good friend of mine is actually filming a documentary right now that's going to be airing on Netflix in the future. The entire movie, entire movie filmed on Sony A6500s. But same thing with the lenses. This lens, if I buy it as a kit, it comes with a lens, it's going to come with a um, what is it, a 16 to 50 millimeter lens, which is fine if I want to do little details and that sort of thing, but I probably want to go to a wide angle. So here's another 10 to 18, just like we had on our Canon, but for Sony. Anyway, so now I have my wide angle lens. I can go out to 10 millimeters. I can have that wide angle effect, that sort of thing. Um, either of these will fly on a gimbal like this, but also I'm gonna talk about one more really, really, really important accessory, and that is a tripod. Once again, no one wants to look at shaky video. So now if I don't want to do a walking shot, I don't want to do where I'm panning using a gimbal, I can now use a tripod. And there's differences in tripods between still photography and video. Video tripods use what's called a fluid head. Now a fluid head allows me to pan very smoothly. Very nice. So say 
say I'm showing off a kitchen and I maybe start right here where is that wonderful stainless steel refrigerator. And I slowly pan across the room to show you what's going on there, showing off the countertops. Or if I want to go up or down, very, very smooth movements. So you're going to want a really, really good video tripod. So let's talk about this for a second. <clears throat> I want to use my phone. I already own it. Don't want to make a huge investment. Just want to get up and rolling, get a little bit of video done. Yes, I can add a gimbal stabilizer to my phone. 99 bucks. No big deal. I could add a complete set of lenses to my phone if I want everything. I want polarizers and wide angles and all kinds of other stuff. Polarizers are great. Think of it as sunglasses for your camera. Wow. Outside, sunny day, you know, you want the blue sky, white puffy clouds. That's the line of a polarizer. But for 60 bucks, I can get a set of all the lenses. Or if I just want to go cheap, for 19 bucks, I can just get the wide angle and I'm up and running. Um, this little guy is a mount. I can put that mount on my tripod and now mount my phone to a tripod and do the same thing here where I have the smooth pans and that sort of thing. So this is our entry level. Let's, we can use our phones. Don't be afraid of it. Um, you can download video off your phone. You can edit that video just like you would with any of these others. We're in video land. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a camcorder. Not a bad deal. I have a camcorder here, a camcorder here. You might have one laying around your house right now. Don't know. But camcorder is worthwhile for just doing video. Um, wide angle lens selection gets a little weird with them because there's not a whole lot of wide angles. We can definitely achieve wide angle easier when we come to these types of cameras. These are all digital. Cameras. Everything's digital. Right? Yeah. yeah, everything's yeah. digital. Not the old uh, tape ones. No, <laughs> there is no tape involved. There is no <laughs> film involved. Um, but say we go to a DSLR camera. Still a very viable camera, wonderful. Canon 77D, one of the best bangs for your buck in a DSLR camera for doing this sort of thing. Great video capabilities. Um, they'll do 1080p HD video all day long. But one thing you gotta keep in remember, with any DSLR camera, they are limited to 29 minute clips. You cannot go over 29 minutes on this camera, at which point you gotta start and restop, excuse me, stop and restart and have your next clip going. So we're gonna do this up to 29 minutes. Same thing's gonna happen with our mirrorless camera, up to 29 minutes. And I think it has something to do with some funky European tax law where they come in under as still cameras and not as video cameras and something really? like that. Wow. But I don't know the whole deals, but it has something to do with Europe. So anyways, um, the mirrorless is gonna offer me a smaller, more compact package. It's definitely where the technology is going. The whole industry is going towards mirrorless cameras. But like I said, either one is completely viable. We come into something like the Sony A6500, it will shoot 4K video. And I want to talk about that for a second. Everybody's like, well, I need 4K video. I absolutely need 4K video. I need the best image quality I have. Well, if you're putting these online, if they're going on YouTube or some real estate site, none of it is 4K, none of it. Most of it's 720p. If you're lucky, you get a 1080p out of it, which is standard HD. So there's really no reason to pay the extra money to have the so, 4K so video. So 1080 is enough. 1080 is plenty, okay. plenty. Like if you're going up to YouTube, YouTube, even if you upload a 4K video to YouTube, the first thing YouTube does is downsize it to 1080p. Oh, that's good enough. And then they downsize another version up to 720p. Okay. Um, let's also talk about formats for a second. People get confused about that. The flat screen TV in my living room is 16.9. That's the format. So you probably want to do your real estate videos in 16.9. That's the format everybody's used to. The old TV format, you think of your old tube TV you used to have in your living room, that was a 4.3 format. All of these cameras will shoot 16.9 or 4.3, and when you're going through your menus and setting it up, it's going to give you a question, what format do you want to shoot, 16.9 or 4.3? Choose 16.9. 16.9. Yeah, it's 2019. Choose 16.9. <laughs> um, 1994 called them, they want their format back. Um, other than that, I cannot stress the gimbals enough, more than anything, but I want to talk about post-production. We've gone out, we've photographed a house, a commercial building, whatever. We got all this great footage, we're all excited. We go racing back to our offices. Now we gotta edit it. This is where the fun starts. Um, this is where the learning curve starts. And the more time you invest in learning now, the quicker and more efficiently you'll be able to do this kind of stuff in the future. And I cannot stress this enough. And whether you're still a photographer video, but all my customers is, I always use this analogy. I can go down to the music store, I can buy a really expensive Fender guitar, I could take it home, I can't play like Eric Clapton. I had to learn how to play like Eric Clapton. I had to practice, 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 and then practice some more. Same thing applies here. These are just tools. 
Um, you need to learn how to use your tools and use your tools properly to get efficient with them, be able to use them quickly, and that sort of thing. So one of our running jokes is, you know, for every five minutes of video when I'm said and done, I maybe had two hours editing. Um, the wow. more you do it, the quicker you'll get at it. But let's talk about editing software, because you have lots of options there. If you're a Mac user, you already have iMovie on your machine, and that'll work. You could use it. Uh, if you're a Windows user, you already have a um, um, Windows Movie Maker on your machine that kind of came with it, you can use that. That'll work. You can edit video there. We can add audio after the fact. Um, if you're just being really cheap, there's a freebie program out there you can download called Hit Film Express. I myself personally use it. Um, decent little editing package, and the cost was right. It was free. So anything free is worth saving up for. Um, but the industry standard by far and wide is Adobe Premiere. You get that with Adobe Creative Cloud, and then it'll come with like Lightroom and Photoshop, and other applications you're going to want to use if you're doing anything with still and video photography whatsoever. So we get back to our offices. We edit everything. We have this great looking video, but we have no audio yet. Um, and we're out filming this house, and who knows, maybe there's people talking in the background, whatever. When we're out filming, we really don't care, but we probably want to add a second audio track over that. Now, there's lots of places online where you can go buy um, royalty-free music, so you can have music in the background. You just can't lift your favorite hit song off the radio and use it. That's actually a copyright infringement. So get some royalty-free music that you can use as your background, just so it's kind of happy and fun. But more importantly, a decent microphone I can add to my computer so I can now do audio after the fact. I can add a description of the property. Welcome to 123 Main Street. This Royal Tudor home featuring 1,500 square feet, whatever. But you can now add a description to what the video is talking about. We can talk about features of the home, uh, the living room, the property, whatever. But now I can add decent audio over the top. And whether you think you have the voice for radio or not, or maybe you know somebody who does, a decent microphone is everything. And once again, um, we'll need some audio recording software. There are freebies out there you can find. There's stuff that's built into Windows machine. There's stuff that's built into Apple Macintosh machines. But you're going to probably add an audio track that you're going to then add to your video over the top and post. Um, but that's what I have for right now. But more than anything else, I cannot stress, pick a system. Come in here and see us. Here at ProCamp, we're in Livonia. We, um, we're big fans of finding the right tools for the job you want to do, because I cannot stress enough, these are tools. Um, I get people come in here all the time, Craig, what one camera will make me a better this or that? And it's like, none of them. They'll make you the same crappy photographer that you are with a better camera. Your skills are everything. So like I said, I can do unbelievable video off my phone. I can do unbelievable videos off of these. But how much effort did I have to put into it to get there is going to be key and how well have I worked on my skills to get the most out of this gear is going to be key. Gentlemen, do you have questions? I do. I mean, if you've done that before. Voiceovers for videos, you sound really good there, Craig. <laughs> Why, thank you, sir. I do have a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. I appreciate you going through the different setups. And I think a lot of uh, our audience is going to be, you know, real estate agents that uh, probably paying a professional photographer now and maybe just want to subsidize the video um, But you're saying something like this they could use is just practice getting that and that post-production is so important Oh, and let's talk about that for a second because I think you had something. I'm sure all of you are gonna have properties where it's like Okay, we should probably spend a couple of bucks and hire a pro for this mm -hmm. and you've got to make that call mm -hmm. You know if it's if it's a 3.5 million dollar home spend a couple of bucks Don't do it with your iPhone yeah. bring in a pro um, there are people who have gone to college and have spent their entire careers working on these, this skill set. Um, just like, and I can't stress enough, just because you own some gear doesn't mean you are a hardcore pro and know exactly what you're doing. And everything I'm showing you, this is all kind of the entry level to pro gear. I didn't bring out the $6,000 cameras. I didn't bring out the $10,000 cameras. I brought out the $1,000 cameras. And I want you to keep that in mind. But the more you apply yourself, the more you work on your skill set with using this gear, the better you will be. Yes, you are completely capable of doing professional looking videos in the privacy of your own office, so to speak. Um, but you gotta start making that call. Of, when do I need a pro? When can I do this myself? What makes sense for this particular property? Okay, and you mentioned before our uh, show that you would always edit on a laptop, right? You would always edit on the computer? You wouldn't do the editing on the phone? No, no. Break up your laptops. Um, hopefully you have a decent laptop that can handle video. You're gonna need a, you're gonna need a lot of RAM memory, a fast machine. 
Um, video files get big, they get really big. Um, going back to people talking about 4K video, if we go up to from 1080p, which is standard HD, to 4K, um, not only do you have more resolution than you ever, ever are gonna need for any online use, um, you now have made your laptop obsolete and your desktop obsolete and everything else because these files are going to be so huge, it's going to let you know really quickly how weak your back-end equipment is. But a decent laptop, any decent laptop, uh, Windows machine, Macintosh, I don't care, um, can, it, can edit standard video, no problem. Um, storage, video files get to get big, so you might want to think about me having an external hard drive, a little storage. Okay. Um, Cleanliness is next to godliness as far as keeping our files organized. So I might set up one folder that's like one, two, three Main Street, and then in that folder I have another folder that's like raw clips, and maybe these are the clips that are out of the camera. Right. And then I might have another folder that's like my editing project. Oh, and yeah, my desk, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's gonna have all my little, all my little bits. We have to stay organized. <laughs> yeah, right? it's gonna have all my little bits, maybe my audio clips, that sort of thing. And then I'm gonna have another folder that's gonna be like my final project after I after I get it all done. That's good. And inevitably, it happens to me all the time. Every time I'm editing a video, I'll get it done. I think I'm good to go. I'll watch it through once. That's fine. And then what you're going to do is out of your program, it's called rendering, you're actually going to render okay. the final cut of that video. Then you'll do your first render of it, you'll watch it one more time and go, oh, I didn't fix that. And then you're back to doing it one more time, yeah. and you're going to fix that and probably render it again. But it seems like everybody renders their video twice. There's the first time when you think you got it done, and the second time when you really fix that last thing you missed. Right. Nice. But I cannot stress audio enough. And like I said, if you don't have the voice to do the voiceover, Find someone who does. There's somebody who has an outgoing personality where you can give them a script that says, this fine tutor home, or whatever, right. but talks about the features of the house. Oh, that's awesome. But now with that said, none of this is dangerous. You can't hurt yourself. Uh, unless you drop the equipment, you really can't break it. Um, any camera, regardless of this, its worst enemies, water, sand, and dropping. So if you don't get it wet, you don't drop it on the beach, and you don't drop it and have it hit cement, you really can't mess up your gear, and all of them, no matter how wacky you get with your settings, you think, oh, I'm insanity, it could all be set back to factory specs really, really easy. Now, with that said, I don't want people running off and willy-nilly and buy gear. Um, don't willy-nilly hit Amazon and just buying stuff online that you don't know what it does. Come talk to a pro. Let's figure out how to put a system together that's going to do what you want to do, that says within your wheelhouse, your skill set to be able to use it, and you too can be making awesome video relatively easy. Now there's gonna be a learning curve. I'm not gonna say it's like super easy, hit play and away we go, but the learning curve can be as small or as large as you want it to be. It depends on how big of a production you wanna run. That sounds good. Well, Craig, we wanna thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Obviously, he's given us some great insight to the professional side of what video could be, and that's gonna make us greater agents here at GMAR. Thanks so much. We'll catch you next time. Wait, guys, bring it in. I have one of my videos with one thing. Yeah. How cool is that? All right. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Take care.